Recording in progress. Kobe? Pride, go ahead. Hey, Pride from ASAP Sports. Um, so obviously you're from Sweden. Um, it's about a nine hour flight from here to Vegas where you're holding your training camp. Um, is there any type of jet lag you're feeling or anything along those lines? Like did that nine hours really bother you when you first got here? That's a good question actually. And the uh, first time I flew over from, from Sweden to uh, United States, I had a real problem with jet lag, especially when I'm supposed to perform in training. So it took me around like two weeks to start to feel normal actually. Uh, but then I started researching what can I do to minimize the jet lag. And there's a lot of things you can do when it comes to like sunlight, sleeping, fasting, and uh, like adjusting your schedule ahead of the travel time. So that's what I've been doing the last few times over here. And uh, seriously, I had no jet lag this time. I just had a perfect schedule, like woke up with so much energy, 6 a.m. every day. It was tired around like 9, 10, went to bed. And that's how it's been for this whole fight camp, actually. That's good. And last question. So obviously, you know, you usually do all your training camps in uh, Sweden. Was there any differences doing your training camp in the States or did it kind of just feel the same as always? Uh, definitely felt different because uh, in Sweden, I'm so much into my uh, routines. Like I've been doing the same kind of practice and with the same training partners, you know, year in, year out. Uh, and uh, when I come here, everything gets mixed up, new training partners, new uh, kind of uh, ways of, of training. And uh, to be honest, it, it's very motivating because at home I have like, five, six professionals that always show up. But if one guy is, is uh, gone, that's 20% of my training partners. And and here in this at Syndicate MMA, you know, there's like 50 pros on the mat at the same time. So it's it's way different. And just being around that level of, uh, of uh, professionals all the time is very inspiring to me. Kobe? Hi, Oliver. Kobe from Pro Sports Podcasters in Canada. Been to Sweden many times. Love it there. Obviously, you're feeling pretty good here. Just wondering, since you've joined Bellator, you finished all of your opponents inside the first round. Do you expect this to be another aggressive fight or do you expect this to go the distance? Uh, I definitely expect this to be an exciting fight because that's always my intention when I go out there. Uh, and I always search for the finish uh, right from the start. Um, and I think one of my biggest strengths is I'm very well-rounded, so I can finish the fight from any position. In my pro debut, I won by like an inverted upside down triangle because I get <laughs> suplex down in that position. So that says something I think about my finishing ability. Now we spoke to Kyle earlier and he admitted he didn't know much about you before he got matched up with you, did his homework, knows what you're all about now. How much do you know about him coming into this fight? Uh, I've also done my research, and I can tell he's an accomplished wrestler. Uh, I also uh, watched his last four uh, Bellator fights. Uh, so I ha have a good idea of how he fights. And, I mean, he's a specialist with his uh, long list of accomplishments in, in wrestling. So it's not a secret what he's going to try to do. And uh, it's always easier to game plan against someone who has a specialty like that. Now, you mentioned you had a lot more training partners over here in the States. So was there anyone you've worked on with in particular to kind of negate his wrestling? Um, not like any specific training partner. There's a lot of good wrestlers at Syndicate. Uh, so, so I could more or less pick and choose. Uh, but they have a, a very good wrestling coach uh, that started pretty recently, Frank Hickman, uh, who teaches the wrestling classes. And it's, I can tell it's very high level. You know, looking forward to it, buddy. It should be a great first bout. Thank you. Santiago. Hi, Oliver. Thank you for the time and welcome back. It's been a while since, since we've seen you. Was there a specific reason why you didn't get in the cage earlier? Yes, it's called COVID restrictions, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, thing is, after my last fight, uh, they actually shut down the European scene. And uh, to fight in the States, I needed a visa. 
and the visa process turned out to be very long and complicated due to COVID restrictions because all the embassies closed and you need to go to the embassy obviously to get an interview and get the visa stamped in your passport. So it was a very long and uh, tough process and I had to look around Europe for different embassies that would get an appointment for me. And I ended up traveling to Madrid in Spain just to go to the embassy, the American embassy and get my visa. Uh, and then I was supposed to fight actually before summer. And I had my opponent, I, I signed a fight contract and everything. Uh, but uh, two weeks before uh, the fight, he pulled out. So the fight got canceled. And uh, that's why you haven't seen these things. Did you bring your brother, the karate nerd, with you as well? And is he going to be on your corner on Five Nights? Yes, sir. He's a staple in my team and he's sitting right over there making a video log as usual. One of the best YouTube spaces, pages around, man. Good luck on Five Nights, Oliver. Always a pleasure Thank talking. You. I appreciate it. Luis? Uh, hi, Oliver. I'm Luis from MMA Beat. Uh, how important is for you to get the win uh, your fourth win in a row in Bellator and your first fight in America. Yeah, I'm excited to to put on a show for the American audience uh, for the first time because uh, all of my previous fights uh, even before Bellator has been around Europe. Um, and since the time difference, uh, there's, of course, different audience that's going to tune in and watch. So this time is going to be the opposite. And uh, I... Um, I'm not too attached to the results, to be honest. Uh, I have more of a long-term view of my career, uh, so I don't get too yeah, attached to, to wins or losses as long as I feel I'm progressing and getting better with each fight, you know? Uh, of course, I want to climb up the ladder and, uh, and uh, you know, a win is always more fun than a loss, but as, as long as I feel I'm improving, I'm enjoying the whole ride, and I'm improving as a martial artist, it's a win to me. All right, last one here, Ronald. This is Ronald E. Smith from Getting Real. Oliver, you're not only just ranked number 10 in the welterweight Bellator, but also, too, you're also a hero to also young little animals. I would love to hear your story after I caught on Instagram of you bringing this young partner to your team, Pickle. Talk about that old experience <laughs> of that. Yeah, so for those who, who uh, are not familiar with this, when, when we drove home from, from practice uh, the other week, uh, there was a, a very rough looking little dog walking by the road and uh, we didn't see any owner. We, we followed it for a while and uh, we got out of the car. At first it got pretty scared, but then it came up to us and it didn't have any tag or anything. So we took, took it home and we gave it a shower and it really stank. <laughs> And uh, we fed it and gave, gave it water. Then we drove to the animal uh, rescue uh, and they could track the breeder and the breeder could find the owner. And eventually the dog that we decided to call Pickle uh, ended up with this rightful owner. And uh, she is actually named Lily. <laughs> All right, that's the last one, Oliver. Thanks for the time. Yeah, my pleasure. Recording.